Just thankful that we're here. This is, uh, we're in, uh, wrapping up our month of prayer. Church, do you not know that this is the 21st year that we've set aside time to consecrate and inquire of the Lord? Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. The Lord spoke to our pastor, Pastor Dan, um, in 2002, I believe it was. And uh, he called the congregation aside and said, we're going to fast, we're going to pray. We're going to shut everything down. All the meetings were shut down, and we had special services. In church, we've never been the same because we've invited God to do whatever he wanted to do. And as a multi-ethnic church, we would not be here today, I don't believe, if we didn't have a foundation and a culture of prayer. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for that. But as I was, was praying this week and preparing, I sensed the Lord said, I'm pleased with the culture of prayer that's been established. But I want you to add something to your prayer. This is what he said. I want you to pray with an expectation. Many of us, we've been praying, but it says hope deferred makes the heart what? Sick. And many of us have kind of given up on our prayers. We've prayed and seemingly nothing is happening. Seemingly heavens are shut up. But since the Lord said that, I want you to expect, I want you to put dust off those old prayers. <laughs> those old prayers that you felt, I, I never responded or I didn't hear them. I heard them. But I want you to approach me with an expectation and faith like never before. As a matter of fact, I'm going to renew your faith. I'm going to renew your confidence. And the way that you approach me is going to be different. And as a result of that, and I really believe this is the, the, the word of the Lord for the church, as a result of your prayer and expectation and faith, I am going to show up. I am going to bring deliverance. I am going to bring miracles, healing. I'm going to restore. I'm going to restore marriages. I'm going to touch your children. I'm going to bring prodigals home. I'm going to heal your sick bodies. I'm going to deliver from depression. I am going to do for some the unthinkable. Why? Because now you are approaching me with expectation. And how many of you know when uh, someone gives you a promise? Say someone said that I'm going to give you, I'm going to send thousands of dollars to you, but it's coming by mail. Every day you're checking the mailbox, aren't you? I'm expecting. I'm, I'm expecting something. And the Lord said that I'm going to stir you up again, and you're going to approach me with expectation. That's number one. Number two, he said, as a result of that, this house, we're going to have special services just for testimony. Special services for testimony because as a result of the expectation, people are going to be saying, the Lord opened this door for me. The Lord gave me an increase here. The Lord healed my body. The Lord restored my marriage. The Lord delivered me from addiction. And when we start sharing that, we're going to have to open up services. And the Lord said, throughout the week, just so the people of God can come and say, look what our great God has done. Look what our great God has done. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then as we do that, he said, and this is, these were the words, he said, I want to be the God who answers prayer. I want new life to know me as the God who answers prayer. And then finally, I sensed in my spirit, the Lord said, I want you to be intentional in bringing your children around. I want them to know the Holy Spirit. I want them to know the Holy Spirit in an intimate way. Teach them how to pray and inquire of the Holy Spirit. He's their helper. And at the age of four and five, I want them to offer prayers. Teach your children how to write them down. Establish a journal. Write their prayers. Maybe it's, you know, I, I, maybe they're going to pray for a bully. Maybe they're being bullied and they, they need the Lord's help. Teach them how to write that down and then expect. And then parents begin to inquire how are things going with Johnny is he still bullying you and then church when it gets to the place where he said mommy all of a sudden I became the one who was bullying me I became their best friend God moved that will change the trajectory of that child's life amen. something like that the Holy Spirit is concerned church about these things amen, amen. 
And I, I said, the Lord said, I want you to train them up so as they get older, they will be true ambassadors of me. On fire, knowing that they serve the true, I don't care what the culture is saying, they serve the true and the living God. There's no one who rivals me who was matched by me. Our kids need to know. The Spirit of the Lord said, our kids need an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The youth ministries are good. Sunday school is good. Amen. Singing in the choir is good. But I want them to encounter the power of the Holy Spirit again. Amen. Can we say amen to that church? Hallelujah. We agree. Now, are we going to expect these services to take place? Amen. And I want to be in the line to give my testimony. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. I have the distinct privilege and pleasure, and I'm honored to be able to talk about my helper, my friend, Holy Spirit. And anybody who knows me, I love, it's not a topic, it's a reality, Holy Spirit. But before I get into just quickly to talk about the ways the Holy Spirit partners, say partners, he partners with us. My, my, the topic is Holy Spirit, colon, partners, prayer partners, partners in prayer. Amen. Say partners in prayer. Amen. We, boy, that's a good part, isn't it? Amen. We talk about prayer partners. He's our partner in prayer. He's our partner in many things, but specifically, Holy Spirit is our partner in prayer. So I just want to talk just a little bit about him. I want to maybe introduce to some and reintroduce to others. I think we need a context here of who the Holy Spirit is. Sometimes we think we know who he is, but, and you notice, I say he is, not it is, not who he is. Okay, the Holy Spirit is the most disregarded, the most disrespected, and the most dishonored person of the Trinity in Godhead. He is not a novice. He's not a novice, but has been at work in the earth from its inception. He played the central role in the creation narrative. He influenced the destinies of the kings, the prophets, the priests of the Old Testament. His work in the life of Jesus is pivotal, pivotal to the redemption story. He was an active participant in the activities surrounding Jesus' conception and his birth, his ministry life, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. This same Holy Spirit, in the old school, this same Holy Ghost. I'll get old school on you. He now resides on the inside of every believer to help us to thrive. Say thrive with me. He's not there to help us just survive. He's not in us just to help us get by. He's not there so we can just kind of be mediocre. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm there to help you survive on your journey. Isn't that good news? To thrive. He wants us to thrive. Let's get that. So how do we get to know him? How, how do we, the question is, how do we better relate to Holy Spirit? How do we connect with Holy Spirit? How do we engage him as he engages us? Real quickly, there's, there's several things we can do, but these, th these three I feel are important. First, we acknowledge his personhood. Let's stop treating him like an it. Let's stop treating the Holy Spirit like an it, like he's this kind of puff of, like Casper, the friendly ghost or something like that. We have this image. That's not Holy Spirit. That's not who he is. It's a misconception. That's important, church. It's important. He's a person. Say he's a person. He's a person. Okay? And, and you know what? One thing that could help us is when we wake up in the morning. When I wake up in the morning, usually, and, and I come in the room and my wife is there, I usually greet her. I say, good morning. Come on. Hello. How are you doing? How was your night? With the Holy Spirit, we can just say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Simple as that, good morning. It helps us to recognize him. Starting out, first of the day, good morning, Holy Spirit. He is kind and gentle. He has a name, he has a personality, he has emotions, he has desires, he has intelligence. And the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is where? He's in here, in you. Therefore, this makes us partners in every aspect of life, Pastor Wayne, in every aspect of ministry. We're partners. We're linked. Amen? Now, also, we need to invite his counsel in all matters. Say all matters. all matters. 
He wants to do life with us. This is important. He not only enjoys Bible study and worship service, but he wants to go with you when you go to work. He's interested in your career, your vocation, your future, your decision making. He's interested in going to school with your children. Thank God for that. He wants them to inquire of him, ask him for help on their homework. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to give you some basic practical things here because sometimes we relate Holy Spirit to deep and mystical. He can be there, but he's here to do life with us. And you know what? He even likes to go to football games. He was there a few weeks ago when the Bills played the Bengals, wasn't he? He was there. The mall thanks God that he was there. He was there. He saved his life. And not only that, he used that to incite a mini prayer movement. You had big burly men on their knees crying out. You had sports casters declaring uh, God's word, praying and cr crying out to God. Again, NFL of all places. <laughs> These men that are taught to be rough and gruff and tackle each other on their knees before. He said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. That's just a prelude to what's to come. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants to do more of this. We can't count them out. Holy Spirit has some things in store that we have not seen. And again, we got just a glimpse of what Holy Spirit can do and wants to do to show who he really is. Amen. Say, do it again. Do it again. Oh, I remember when I was a kid and I had an experience encounter with the Holy Spirit and we need more of these. I've shared this with some of you. You've heard me share it. Uh, I couldn't play. I was learning how to play baseball. At the end of the season, I was up at bat, bases loaded. I couldn't hit a lick. Everyone knew Pastor Melvin, I couldn't hit a lick. But I grew up in a culture of prayer and they said that God answers prayer. I'm a little kid. So, you know, I believe, brother, that he answers prayer. So I needed some prayer. <laughs> and I knew I needed some prayer in front of all these people. No, this is a precious testimony to me. And I can remember getting up to bat. Oh, I was nervous because everyone expected, well, you know, the game is over. <laughs> but they didn't know the Holy Spirit. <laughs> they didn't know. Holy Spirit up was up at bat. He's in me, right? I hit a grand slam. <laughs> I hit a grand slam. It was significant. It changed my life. It changed the way I relate to Holy Spirit. I was talking to him. He not only talked to me, but he showed me who he was. In addition, later in life, I wanted my daughter, one of my kids, to have encounters with the Spirit. It's more than just reading the Bible. He's real. He's with you in everyday life, everyday living. He's there. I want you to engage him. Don't dismiss him. Engage him. Even when you're not doing things right, he's still there. And I want you to be reminded that he's there and sees everything that you're doing. <laughs> Amen? I can remember she brought home a, a, a crossword puzzle. And uh, we got all the words. She got all the words. This was an assignment from school. Some of you have heard this. And I can remember, uh, I said, okay, Jade. I said, you go to bed because it's 9 o'clock. I'm going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that word to us. I don't know it. We had searched for it. We just didn't know it. I just didn't have the, you know, my wife was looking for it. We made calls. We just didn't know what that word was. So I said, the Holy Spirit, we'll pray and ask him. That morning I got up, got on my knees, began to pray. I said, Lord, this word dropped in my heart. Never had seen that word. With the spelling and all, I went to the dictionary. I said, this is the word. <laughs> what is my point here? I, I, I want our children and I want us to know that Holy Spirit is waiting for us yes. to inquire yes. and have an experience with him yes. and treat him with reverence and respect and honor that he deserves. Yes. Amen? Yes. In every, what my, my point is, everyday living, say everyday living. Everything. He wants us to grow accustomed to interfacing with him. He wants some of us to talk to him about our marriage. Amen. Seemingly things are not going okay. And we're, I thank God for counseling. I'm a counselor. So thank God for, for, for the counselors. But in some cases, the Spirit of the Lord said, would you come to me? And I'll show you what to do. And in some cases, I'll change your heart. And that's going to turn your marriage around because I'm going to change you and not your mate. Uh, the last one, listen to him. Say listen. Okay, because when we listen to him, 
we really then are saying, Lord, not only do I want you to answer, but I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Now listen, this uh, Hebrew word, shema, it means to hear, it means to listen, but in it, it also means to obey. It is all in one in Hebrew. So when you say you're listening, remember what Eli told uh, Samuel? He said, look, boy, please don't come in here and you hear the voice of God anymore. Just say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And not only listening, but meaning, speak, Lord. Your servant is willing to obey and do whatever you speak. So those three things are just simple things. I love this quote. And actually, I got this uh, from a Pastor Dana's online Facebook post. By the way, thank God for our online campus as well. It says, when you pray, God listens. When you listen, God talks. So in essence, I think what the message is, the Lord wants us to do more listening. And sometimes that's the most difficult part because we're talkers and we do a lot of, we have a lot to say to the Holy Spirit and then we get up and we go. <laughs> but I want to challenge us if we would just simply carve out time to where we intentionally listen. And for those who can grow accustomed to writing it down, uh, I've become a fan early on of journaling and I write it down. And then you can go back. Some of us, we've prayed prayers and we forgot. But if you write it down, two years later you go back, God, I asked this in November of, 20, uh, uh, of 20, uh, 2001. 20 years later, or whatever that time frame is, here it is. Jot it down, answered prayer. I like that. Answered prayer in your journal. It will inspire faith. So, how does the Holy Spirit partner with us in prayer? I want to give us Three points, have limited time to do it, so I'm racing. So if I talk fast, forgive me. <laughs> Amen. I talk fast anyway. Okay, number one, and Pastor Joel and Pastor Tina really set this up nicely for us, but we can't hear it enough. So I, I wanted to share it this morning. It's, it's so significant to the way we pray and how we pray is that we know that we're sons and daughters. He, the Holy Spirit affirms us as sons and daughters of who? Of God. We have full access to the Father through Christ by the power of the Spirit. This past week, I've been going around, I'm a son. I'm a son. I'm a son. Not only am I a son, I'm a co-heir with Christ. I'm a son. I'm an heir of God. Repeating it. How many of you really believe you're a son or daughter of God? You really believe that? Okay, I read it and I believe it when... I'm doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing as a son. Amen. When I mess up, when I think the wrong things, do the wrong things, I don't feel like a son. Amen? I really don't. But it doesn't matter because the price has already been paid by Jesus yeah. and therefore I can come boldly yeah. in the throne room to petition my Savior, my Father also. I'm reminded of uh, well, before I get to that, let's go to the scripture, Romans 8, 15 to 17. We need some word now. I'm well into it. Romans 8, chapter 15 and 17. This is the Holy Spirit affirming us in terms of who we are. The spirit you receive, that's when you accepted Christ, does not make you slaves. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. We are no longer orphans. Church, we don't have to perform. Say, I don't have to perform. And then it says, and by him, that's the Holy Spirit in us, we cry, Abba, Father, which is a term of endearment or a term of reverence, Aramaic term of reverence for the Father, term of closeness, okay? The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit, our regenerated spirit, that we are God's children. Say, we are God's children. Now, if we're children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. So knowing your identity, knowing who you are, is so pivotal to your prayer life. Now, my son, Kevin, has two kids, and they're very secure in their love. One is six, one is three, uh, the love of their father. And guess what? When they go into stores, they act like it. They saying, Daddy, I want that. Daddy, I want that. Daddy, I want that. Daddy, I want that. They don't have a clue as to how much it costs. Not only that... But you have one, the six-year-old, he's picking stuff off 
the shelf and put it in, in, the, in the cart. Not asking daddy for anything. That's pretty secure, isn't it? Well, how much more does Abba Father want us as his children to come boldly before him? Say, Daddy, would you give me this? Daddy, I need that. 35 years ago, something happened to me that was devastating. My daughter Jade, when she was born, uh, she wasn't breathing. Fast forward this story. Doctors told us if she survived, you've heard, some of you have heard this, if she survives, um, she probably would have brain damage. I went home, dejected, sitting there, um, frightened. I couldn't pray. Anybody ever been there? You couldn't pray? You just didn't have the words. You didn't have the energy. You had nothing. It was like you know, dish rag. That's the way I felt at the end of the day. But the Holy Spirit came. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit came. And you know what he said? I got this. He said, I got this. And do you not know within two weeks there was a turnaround in her life? And then they said, although she's going home and it looks like she's okay, we're going to follow her for four years to see if there's any uh, brain dysfunctions and all that. My daughter is 35, and I assure you there's no brain damage. <laughs> I assure you there's no brain damage. God has touched her life. God has blessed her, and even over the past several years, the enemy has tried to steal her. And, st and, and that's the other thing. He didn't stop at birth. He's been after her her entire life. And he tried to derail her, and she was in this situation that was causing her harm. And God intervened and delivered her, raised her up. She's serving God, praising God, favor of God, prospering in her, her career, had vision, loved the Lord with all her heart. God turned it around. That was the Holy Spirit's intervention. Amen. He watches over our children, and he's wanting to, to, to even allow them to have supernatural encounters with him. Now, the third, the second one is advocates. He pleads our case before the Father. Romans 8, 26, 27, in, verses, in these verses, Paul declares the intensity and power of the Holy Spirit's intercession for us. This is what it says. It says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Say weakness. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should. Why? Because we have to contend with the flesh. My flesh is not saved. The, the scripture says that there's no good thing in my flesh. Oh, but I'm getting a resurrect, re resurrected body one day. But until that, again, I can pray out of my fleshly desires. My soul is still being regenerated. My soul is fed with, with, with information that's not of God. It doesn't align with the Spirit of God. Amen, church? It's a line. Uh, uh, sometimes my soul can tip into cultural issues, so I'll pray out of my cultural experiences or information I have. Sometimes it's political. Amen? We're praying out of our political ideologies. That's not going to work in the heaven. Amen? We're praying out of our emotions and feelings, which are fickle. But, good news, it said, but the Spirit himself. Here we go. Here's the help here. But the Spirit himself knows our need and intercedes on behalf with signs and groanings too deep for words. And he, God, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Spirit intercedes on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. Aren't you glad, church, that God didn't answer some of your prayers? I can say, I dodged a bullet. Thank God for his will. Because some things we're praying is out of the self, is out of flesh, is not the perfect will of God. But the Spirit knows exactly what I need, and he transports that petition or that prayer or that cry to the Father yes. and interprets with groans that cannot be uttered. And guess what? He knows uh, 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 the, 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 the will of the Father, and the Father knows the mind of the Spirit. So what we have is we have the whole team praying for us. We have the Holy Spirit making intercession according to the will. We have the Father on the right hand making intercession. They're all in agreement. Yes. So we have the whole trinity at bat for us humans. Amen. Do we get that? Amen. Okay. We're not praying by ourselves. We can't get off because the Holy Spirit is there to make it right. Amen. And even when 
Again, we don't get what we want. Oftentimes, the Lord shows, you see, this wasn't my will. Amen. I had another plan for you. Can we give God room to answer the way he wants to answer? Amen. Amen. To do whatever he wants to do, even after we make petition. Amen. Because we're going to have to trust them. It's good when he gives us exactly what he wants. But when it doesn't come, there's another plan. There's another will. And as the people of God, we said, we submit to that. I, I thought of when I was studying this, at first I said, he gives us miracles. He doesn't give us miracles all the time. He doesn't always come in signs and wonders. He doesn't always do what we want him to do. Why? Because he knows what's good for us. Amen? And therefore, we learn to submit and say yes to that. Some, again, in the Bible, they were martyrs. Do you think they wanted to be a martyr? No. That was part of God's plan. Three, he activates our spirit. Say he activates. How many of you remember uh, the sermon that Pastor Nina preached? Uh, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. We didn't forget that, did we? All the gyrations in the drink. He activates. One, he activates our prayer language. He activates us in our prayer language. Acts 2 and 4 says, when the Holy Spirit fell on believers in the upper room, all of them spoke in other tongues as the Spirit. Say the Spirit gave them utterance. These are tools, again, that he's given us. I call them power tools. Say they're power tools in prayer. Pastor Wayne, when we speak in tongues, we bypass this. Okay, that's so intellectual. Okay, sometimes this can get in our way. We need this, of course. I'm not one of the uh, 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 folks who, who say, no, we don't need the, uh, uh, <laughs> the spirit of God. We don't need uh, uh, intellect. We don't need knowledge. We do need that. But I believe in this day in particular, we need, like never before, the Holy Spirit to intervene, to understand how to pray and to pray more effectively. And the Lord has given us a language that we can speak in. Now, Paul said, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. They utter mysteries by the Spirit, not by the mind, but by the Spirit. Speaking in tongues, according to Jack Hayford, who, by the way, just passed. He's the spiritual father. He was the spiritual father of our pastor. He just passed. He was well known throughout the world. I think he penned uh, over 100 songs uh, of praise. This is what he said. A man of intellect. I want to make this point. This is what he said about our heavenly language. He says, speaking with tongues is a spiritual resource intended for and available to every born-again believer who will ask for it and be open to it. The spiritual language is self-edifying, number one. The scripture says it builds us up. Say, builds us up. Builds us up. Two, it enables you to speak to God. It equips us with insight and expands the dimensions of our praise and our intercession. Can we pray that like never before, the Holy Spirit would activate us? Say, activate us, Holy Ghost particularly activate us at home in our prayer life. So when we pray, we're praying in alignment with the Spirit of God and with the Father. Fourth and last is he activates the Word of God in our lives. John 14, 26, this is Jesus before he was leaving to go be with the Father. He said, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything. Say everything, everything. That I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit causes the words of Jesus and the promises of the Father to come alive in our hearts. He makes it rhema. Say rhema. Rhema is an alive word. Amen. It's not just reading it. Sometimes we can read scripture. We can re read words on a page, and they can inspire this, okay? They can impress this. They can impress others. But there's something about the Spirit of God when the Spirit of God lifts his promises to us, lifts his word to us. That causes us to get on fire, and it causes us in prayer to pray with such a faith and a confidence and a boldness that answers come. How many want answers from the Lord? Okay. Now, I want to share this testimony. If the musicians are here, if they could come as I'm wrapping up. In 2011, 2011, 
my sister-in-law found out that she had stage four colon cancer. Stage four. Of course, she was wrecked. Her name is Kim. Not only did she have stage four, but it had metastasized into her liver. She had nodules all over her liver. So they cut one side of her liver off, and they said it would grow back, which it did. And they cut the other side of her liver off, again, trying to fight you know, this cancer. And they said that probably wouldn't grow back. She was at Sloan Kettering, by the way, the best cancer hospital. And as they sliced that off, she was just believing God. She was believing God for a miracle. This is what the Spirit of God did. By the way, when they sliced the, a, a portion of her liver, right side of her liver off, and they said it wouldn't grow back, it grew back. <laughs> it grew back. Okay, but there's more. The word of the Lord came to her and quickened her and gave her this passage in Mark 5, 34, where Jesus told the woman who had touched him, remember she fought through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment? And this is what he said to her. He said, daughter, your faith, say your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And then the Spirit of the Lord added this to it. He said, uh, I want you to repeat this every day. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. No sickness, no disease will overpower me. She would recite that over and over every day. It's 2023. This happened in 2011. She's still cancer free. Still cancer free. Still praising God. Still declaring his goodness. And not only that, but the doctors are amazed. And at the end of her treatment, yeah, they're amazed. They're bright. They're smart. But God has the final say. God has the final say. And God gives us tools in prayer and intercession that we can use. Hallelujah. That presses through all the stuff and touches God himself. And then God touches us. How many want an increase of the Holy Spirit, particularly in prayer? How many want an increase in your expectation? Now let me ask that again. How many really want God to do something in your spirit where you will really expect and anticipate a move of his spirit? I'm going to ask, if you would stand, I'm going to ask you to consider this in the coming weeks. We have these, or we have the walls of, the walls of the prayer walls here around the church. And since the Lord wants you to dust off of those prayers that seemingly he never responded to. And he wants you to re-engage. He wants you to be bold in your request in the coming days. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, Maybe I did. But I believe that God is going to fill our services with people. When I say services, the special testimony services. Can, can we see, can we get a vision of testimonial services where people are coming just to share what God is doing? Can we get excited over that? <laughs> can we really get excited over that? I mean, miracles, deliverances, all sorts of things. And I just feel that, not feel, I know that God wants you to come boldly again. And then lastly, write it down and date it. <laughs> date it. Date it. Again, it's saying something. Lord, I'm asking this and I'm keeping track. And I'm, I'm waiting for the answer. I'm anticipating you to do something great. And then lastly, please, let's engage our children in this. This is not by, just by ourselves. I want you to, if, if you don't have children, pray that the Lord will give you someone that you can mentor, okay? That you can spend time with them, teaching them about how to engage the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, church. We're, we're engaging him. We're not treating him like an it, but we're talking to him about everything. And then watch their lives blossom. And we will get excited about the supernatural encounters that our kids are having. Do you want just kids to prophesy? Do you want your kids to lay hands on the sick and see them recover? Do you want them to go to school and be ambassadors for Christ in the schoolhouse? Amen. 
Do you want them to receive supernatural favor from God so people are coming to them asking, what, who, who do you know? And then that's an opening for them to introduce them to their mighty king and their mighty savior. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our sermon today. I hope that you were inspired and challenged. And maybe you have a question about something that you heard in the message today, or maybe you need prayer. We would love to take the time to pray with you and answer any questions that you might have. All you need to do is simply send us an email to online at newlife.global, and we would love to connect with you. Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You should see the link right over here somewhere and turn those notifications on. That way you are notified every single time we go live on YouTube. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.